Welcome to the Yav Podcast with Cal C on South Sharav Radio. Welcome to the Yav Podcast. Now, I-, I wasn't originally scheduled to even come up with a podcast this week, but you know, when Team Canada is making strides in basketball, that's not only that's something that we haven't seen, but we've we finally been waiting on it and, it and it's coming through now. You got to divert the schedule. Um, so I'm joined by the co-founder of the Skills Refinement Group and the contributor to uh, to you plays AU basketball program, Mr. O'Neal Kamaka. How you doing today, sir? I'm good. How are you, buddy? I'm doing good. I'm doing good, man. I mean, as as you know, as we've been seeing, you know, Team Canada is not only clinch a spot in the Olympics during the this year's FIBA World Championships, but with a win versus Luka and the Slovenia Mavericks, I like to call them. Um, they've they've almost guaranteed themselves a spot in the in the World Championship Finals uh, for the first time ever. What are your thoughts, especially being you know part of the program, part of the AU process, part of basketball overall in Canada? What are your thoughts on Teams Canada run the, this last few weeks? My, I'm just, uh, you know I'm just so so happy and so thrilled. I was just thinking that uh, me too. <laughs> yeah, at, 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 when I was younger, not really younger, maybe eighteen, yeah, younger than eighteen, nineteen. I was always, you know, we always w- dreamed and envisioned. Like I, we, I knew we had a talent. We always had a talent. Mm-hmm. And it was just a matter. Of, it was just a matter of time. And then once we start getting our guys, and then once we start getting NBA guys, guys going into getting drafted and playing in the NBA, again, it was just a matter of time for us to get a, a roster of. You know, majority Canadian guy, uh, can NBA players, and you know, after Nash, um, the thing that stood out for me was, you know, in 2000 we did like guys balled out. Nash was the only NBA guy, but guys, uh, maybe McCullough, guys balled out, right? And they balled out because Nash instilled confidence in them, just because he was there, and they knew that they they were playing with a great player, and you see that guy just played out of you know. Out of the out of out of this world, they were like just confident, and they played above their level, and they just you know, there was no fear in them, and we lacked that since that since two thousand. You know, we had some good players, but they didn't instill fear yeah. in other teams. When other teams are thinking of Canada, they're not scared of us. Right. And when you get somebody like Shea, who's just a stone cold killer, and then you have RJ on there who's a killer as well. But then it's coupled with dogs like Lou Dort and Dylan, who just, they're not afraid to just punch somebody in their mouth. Mm-hmm. Like, nobody has the mental edge over us anymore. We have the mental edge. Teams are just, they're actually afraid of us. Right. They can't, bu- they can't bully us, you know, because we're the bullies now. And what I love is, you know, that's how we were in hockey. Like, if you think about yes. Canada and hockey, yep. we, bullied every, we bullied people, mm-hmm. right? And now we're kind of getting like that where, you know, Dylan and Dylan definitely brings the edge and, you know, he's the bully and, you know, Lou Dort is definitely just tough. And so I'm just so excited, man. Um, we got all the right pieces. We got, you know, um, Dwight who rebounds and just does the, you know, he's going to bang, he's going to play defense, he's going to do hard and dirty work, he's going to play hard. Keller Linick, who's is great, he's seven footer, he's big, he's strong, so he, he not he can't just you know body him in inside the post. He's going to hold his own, but he's uh, offensively he's a great passer. He can shoot the three. He can put it on the. So we got all the right pieces, and we're still missing Jamal. Yeah, you know Benedict. Yeah, Catherine, Benny Math, I like to call him. Yeah, and Andrew Nemhart. Imagine if Andrew Nem if Nemhart how was it? Jamal like we're still missing another three or four guys that are just bananas. So I'm excited. Um, our time it's kind of basketball time and, and ever, you know, I'm, just, I'm just excited about it and, and ever since we we've uh started having more and more players to your point like play across the, across the border at like prep schools and the aau team started doing damage over you know across the border both sides of the border you know and players started climbing up the the rankings on a major level like more and more players start making the nba to your point and and start dominating in the ncaa's you know and and making a huge impact, not just making the NBA, but also making a huge impact when they get there, which is now now the remnants of it has even trickled down to, to raise the level of talent in the CI, on the CIS scene. If you, you know, to, yep. 
like you know the the you know they say like a rising tide lifts all boats, and I think that's what's now happening. You know, from not just the players but coaching as well, right? Like such as yep. yourself, like all those guys has been doing their things over the years and, and coming back and 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 giving back. You know what I mean? It's dope. like that is what's raising the level. You know what I mean? Like when when your trainer, like you know, when I was playing, right? I always said when I was playing, my trainer was like a gym coach. You know, like right. our head coach was a trim was a gym coach. It wasn't until I got to like, well, I would say high schools because I went to Eastern, but but I think Eastern's kind of like uh even at, even at th- those days was kind of an anomaly. But like, yeah. you know, when a 15, 60 year old, six year old who's got talent is coming, and their head coach is like yourself, a guy who played overseas and played yeah. for Team Canada, and has played. It's a difference. It's a big difference. Huge you know difference. What I mean? Yeah, it's, it's, a it's a huge difference because now, because I mean, you coupled that with, of course, you know, you're growing up in, a, in an era where you're seeing, you know, NBA every day in your backyard. It's, you know, the dreams are more realistic. You know what I mean? So all that, exactly. all, all that plays a, all, all that plays a big effect. So we're waiting for this day to finally arrive. And now that we're, we're here and now we're, we got like, um, you know, we have a team that that's, that has more committed NBA players. There's a level of cohesion, you know, that we haven't seen before. The players believe in the schemes. They believe in the coaching staff. But to your point, they're also playing with a level of grit and toughness. You got to be yeah. proud of this. Like, you really have to be proud of what we're seeing right now. Well, listen, I, I'm, I'm ecstatic. I'm really happy. Um, and played a couple of games where they were shaky. And part of that is, you know, it's, being young and um, they're, I think they're feeling themselves too much, you know, when they, because it became easy, right? Mm-hmm. Um, when they started playing Latvia and Le- Lebanon, and was, they got, you could tell that there's a, a, a drop in the mental focus. But it was easy, right? These guys are different level. And so, um, but they pulled it out against Spain and, you know, what they did to Slovenia. Um, they just have guys on their team that are not, that are, they're going to, they're fighters, the guys that are just going to fight. So, I'm excited. Um, I really believe they're going to beat Serbia. Yeah, I liked what I, I liked what I saw today with the ball movement. I think Lebanon, um, Latvia, and it, Lebanon, Latvia, Brazil. I think there's a lot of even Spain. There's a lot of ISO ball. They went away to a lot of ISO ball, um, where you know Shea Shea had the ball. And guys just watching. But what I was optimistic about was in the Slovenia game. There's some ball movement. The ball was moving, swinging around from side to side. Right, and then guys are getting an easier shot, and you're making the defense work. So that was encouraging to see because as long as they play like that, I think we're, you know we have a chance, even against Team USA, who lost in Lithuania. And yeah. you know these, these guys are not. Gonna, I think we match up well against against Team USA. Yeah. Um, you know, like we'll put Dylan on Dylan and Lou on Anthony Edwards, right? And we got smart, crafty guys as well. And so mm-hmm. um, you know, I'm very I, I, I like. I like our chances against Serbia, and I think we'll do well. You know, I have USA beating Germany, so. Um, but yeah, man, I'm so excited. Um, you know, um, I have us going to the finals. I don't think Serbia is going to beat us. I think we're going to beat Serbia. Um, I'm, I'm just so excited where with, with this group of guys, uh, what's going to happen, and then even next year for the Olympics. You know, it's interesting. One day, when they won against Spain, and I realized that it was going to be Luca versus Shea, I got really excited. But what was I think? What was more exciting though was realizing, like you know, in the past when you're seeing, uh, you know, Team Canada play against somebody like Lucas Caliber, you're like, ah, shit. Well, it was a nice run. You know what I mean? Like, and and yes. and for the first time now, you're looking at that. You're like, man, Luca versus Shea. That's going to be a hell of a matchup. And then you're like, but. Like there ain't nothing to be afraid of over there. Like I know it's Luca. The team is gonna be good, but like I call them the Slovenian Mavericks because they play a lot like how the Mavericks played before Kyrie got there, where it's just Luca and everybody else just waits for the pass the ball. But if you think about it, like I knew we we're gonna beat Slovenia. You did what? Sorry, Luca. I knew I I knew we would beat Slovenia. Yeah, no, but but that's that's my point. That's the point I'm making. I I did too. Like that. Like there was no like oh it's Luca. Shoot, we could, we're in trouble. It's like no, they, they just don't handle business. Like because we, we actually have a player that that could match up with Luca. Like they they actually cross each other out. And then so then you go, they both of them cancel each other out. So then you go, okay, then who they got? We got RJ, right? Who's tough? We got Nikhil, who's tough. We give us RJ to give us 
Like RJ can go up. RJ hasn't gone off yet. RJ can go up, right? Because mm-hmm. that's what that's what he can do. And he hasn't even gone off yet. And then McKeel can give us buckets. Yeah. Dylan, you know, and, and those guys are locked down defenders, right? And then, you know, Kelly can give us points with his three point shooting, taking it to the rim. So I'm not worried because I know there's another, you have another score in RJ. Even though RJ hasn't gone off, and I think RJ is doing a great job of, you know, just finding his role and just like, you know what? Let's Shay do his thing. I'm going to try and fill in here and there. But, you know, I think RJ is due to go off like a big game. And so, um, that's why I'm not worried. And Team USA, maybe, but anybody else, you know, I'm not, you know, they might have one guy that can go. I mean, that's it. Everybody else is, is obviously solid, but they don't, they don't listen to any worry or fear in you. So, but with Shea, you know, Shea, Shea can take over and, you know, he can cancel out any other team superstar. And then I think we have, uh, a better team overall. We have the right guys, and um, yeah. So yeah, but we were playing Slovenia. I wasn't even worried at all. I'm like, yeah. okay, Luca might Luca might get his, but I knew he was gonna have to work for it because Dylan, you know, Dylan Dylan's gonna make him work for it. And, Dylan's and gonna Dorn. body him. Yeah, and Dorn's gonna. So you you have two dogs. So once you get you know, it's not there's no break, right? There's no break. It's like you get two physical guys that are just gonna make you work for everything that you have. So. You know, that's what I like about our team with Lou, with Lou and um, with Lou and uh, Dylan. So yeah, man, I'm, I'm very excited about what this group could accomplish. It's it's been great to watch though, especially defensively. Like the way they've they're able to like at times just lock in defensively. It's actually a joy to watch because you you can see like the 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 gaps and everything just shutting down like right in front of you. You can see like every, like the, everything is getting cut off. It's great to watch it yep. in real time. But, Cal- but Calvin, that, that's a coach's dream, bro. When yeah, you, man. When, when you think of defense, and the reason why you have athletic guys is that's what you picture them. Long, athletic guys shutting down passing lanes, or you think, you know, you're making a pass, you think you, and they just shoot the, the gaps, they cover ground so fast, and, you know, that ball gets stolen. They're, they're active hands, active mm-hmm. feet. So as a ball handler, as a guy with the ball, you're working so hard to try and beat, you know, beat your man. And then you you have to make a pass, and so these guys just they they do a great job of staying connected to the, the offensive player with the ball. They get to do a great job, and this is when they're locked in. Right, this is when they're locked in defensively. Because I thought again, that the emergency and the mental slippage happened once they started playing Lebanon. It got easy. They, there was a lot of there was letdown. But you know, if you watch the games before, they were beating people because of their defense. They turned it up yeah. defensively, right? And then you know, once they got back to that, once they got back to playing defense. Right. And again, you know, I, tell, I always tell my players, let your defense be offense. Because if you watch, yep. when teams amp up their defense, it translates to offense automatically. Right. And then you, you have, you know, you jump that much higher, you run that much faster, you have that much more lift in your jump shot. It starts going in. So, you know, if they, if they just stay with that, just keep focusing on the defensive end, I think offense will take care of itself. And so, you know, that's what, that's, you know, defense wins. And that's why they're beating teams. Because eventually, you know, you know, uh, in the close games, they lock down defensively, get the job done. But in games like this with Slovenia, and usually it's the third quarter too that they usually pull away because they come out, guys are well rested, and they just you know, they, they just keep up that defensive pressure where other teams, you know, they're tired because they probably play their starting five a lot more than they want to. Right. Because if they go into their bench, you know, kind of, you know, they don't want to go into their bench too much. The kind of kind of will extend the lead, right? So. Yeah, man, the defense is, is, is one of the things, is, I think, the best, you know, along with the USA in, in, in the tournament. And, and, and what I love about basketball, too, is if you're playing with the right set of guys, because it's one thing when offensively you have a guy that could, could lift the talents and the spirits of other players offensively, but when you see a couple of guys doing that defensively, it, it, it raises your level of intensity as well. It makes you move your feet that much faster. It makes you anticipate passes and get your hand to passing lanes that much more. And then you start taking challenges where you're like, no, I, I want to be the best defensive guy at this moment on the floor. You know what I mean? Like it, it's, it starts to raise the level for yourself on that, on that side as well. Like when you take but pride you defensively, it changes everything. You don't want to let down your teammate. Because I remember when I was at Oakland, I was playing in high school, and um, I remember, I think we were just pressing. You know, I remember my coach telling me where, you had the guy on the ball working hard the night or pressing the guy. And then I think I was off the ball and I wasn't working as hard to deny the path. Right. And then 
my coach was like, you just let down your teammate. He was working so hard, you know, putting pressure on the ball, making it hard for him to make the pass, right? And then and you, you just, just let that You just gave him an easy, easy outlet. You just, you just gave him an easy outlet. And so I'm always reminded of as that as a player. And then when, as a coach, I was always like, you know, when you see your teammate working hard, it, like you said, you start working hard because you don't want to let them down. Like, if yeah. this guy's working, I can't, I can't sell them out like that. They're working hard, and I'm just here chilling. So you're right. It forces you, you know, whether it's you don't want to let them down or you see their energy, and then you, you feed off their energy as well. So, right. that's again, that's what I love about the team. When, when Dylan and Dort, they set the, the you know, they set that energy level and, and they force guys to, you know, to, to rise to that level as well. So, yeah, yeah man, everything we got, we got, we got, I'm feeling really good about this team and our, our chances for this year and next year. And, and before we get to Shea, because fuck it, we, we got to talk about Shea. We really got to talk about Shea. Before we get there, can you just lend a little bit of like love to, to Dylan Brooks? And just and like like, could we just curb the the Brooks hate a little bit on on this side? Because you know, as the season was ending, everybody had this guy, this man playing in China. You know, not even the Europe audio. They had him playing in China, and you look at the factors. This guy, you know, didn't have the greatest uh, season offensively, but overall in his career, minus the antics, and I get all of that. But this guy's been a solid NBA player. You know what I mean? He's 27 years old. He's entering the prime of his career. I, I find it like almost laughable that people were having these actual discussions. Like it was actual, like real discussions on, and not just like casual fans, like on TV shows and stuff. But I'm like, I'm like, are you guys kidding me right now? So watching the way he's been playing, especially even offensively, because you know what he's going to give you defensively, but offensively, you're, you, I like, you think he's kind of reminding you, like, yo, there's a real player here. This is not just, this is not just a scrub on the end of the bench here. That's that's getting a lucky shot. I think, you know, there's a lot there's a lot of chatter, but it wasn't coming from it wasn't coming from, you know, front office people. Right, right. right? Of course. It was, it was coming it was coming from people who don't know anything about basketball. Because you recognize the value of Dylan Brooks. You recognize the value that he brings in the locker room. He brings toughness. He brings energy. Right? He's gonna hold guys accountable. He's not gonna let guys slip. Right? And what did he do? All he did was challenge LeBron James. He didn't back down from LeBron. Mm-hmm. Right? He challenged LeBron James. LeBron James is 38 years old. I would challenge LeBron James too if I was Dylan Brooks. Yeah. Right? People are like, oh, you made a mistake. And it's not like LeBron didn't even do anything. It's not like LeBron, you know, it's not like LeBron's MJ, where MJ, you know, you do that to MJ, MJ's giving you a 50 piece for the whole series. Right? right? LeBron, LeBron was just solid. It's not like LeBron went off, right? And, but the, 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 the Grizzlies just end up losing. And I don't blame Dylan Brooks. Where is John Morant? What did John Morant do? Right? Where is Desmond Bain? Those are supposed to be the two offensive weapons yeah. on the Grizzlies, right? Well, it was a team. The whole it was a team letdown. It wasn't Dylan Brooks. Like Dylan Brooks, to me, I think what he was trying to do was get his guys at. Right? He was like he was putting out there that we're not afraid of anybody. Mm-hmm. But unfortunately, those guys never stepped up, and they used Dylan Brooks as an escape coach. I love Dylan Brooks. I love the way he plays. Um, you know, when you when you play like that, you know, come close to the edge, and he comes close to the edge, and I think he's learning. I think he's learning where the edge is, and you know, just not to go over it. And you know, I love to have a guy like like Dylan Brooks because you know he's gonna hold guys accountable on the team, and he's gonna fight guys. Yeah. And so, you know, one thing I know about a lot of basketball players, they don't like to fight. You know, there's a lot of bark, but they don't like to fight. A lot of guys act tough, mm-hmm. but they don't want to fight. Right? And Dylan's gonna fight guys, and so. You know, guys just don't want to, you know, don't want to see how, how far he's going to go. And so, guys are going to fall in line. I know guys at Houston are going to fall in line. And, you know, I, I love a guy like Dylan Brooks on my team. He, he holds guys accountable. He comes and he plays hard. Um, he's the kind of guy that will get into, he'll, he's not afraid to guard the other team's best player and frustrate and get in that guy and frustrate him and try to take him out of his game. So, I don't know what people are talking about going to play in China. But obviously, you know, they don't know what the hell they're talking about. I'm glad he landed in Houston, and I look forward to see what he does in Houston. And and, and, it, and it's funny because, you know, this man was a Pac-12 player of the year. I know that the conference is dissolving, but he was a Pac-12 player of the year at one point. Like, you you don't do that just being a defensive guy. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, like you get to the professional ranks at, at a certain point. Guys get slotted yeah. into certain roles. And it's like he's yeah. embraced that role to, to his credit. 
You know what I mean? And, and I know he's getting paid like $80 million from Houston. Everybody's going crazy. But I'm like, but that's not a bad deal for Houston, number one. Number two, why wouldn't you pay Dylan Brooks, who's, I mean, he's not a superstar by any means, but like at this stage of the game, $20 million for a role player, I mean, that's for, for what he does. I'm like, that's that's the standard. Like, we're not overpaying for that. Like, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, uh, to me, I just I just find it crazy. And I'm like, yeah, last year he didn't have the greatest season shooting, but I'm like, but this is not a this again. This is I'm talking just offensively. He's not a scrub. And then exactly. defensively, like first, what are you first team all defense? What are we talking about here? Yeah. Well, oh, listen. Like, what are we talking about I, here? Like, it's, like I thought I, honestly, I thought it was la- I, like I heard some of these comments. I thought it was laughable. I really thought it was laughable that this was actually a thing. So, so it just it just shows people who don't know basketball and don't really know what it takes to win. And you need guys like them. If you're not going to get, you know, ten guys that are, um, you know, all world, right? Um, they just won't exist on a team anyway. So you need solid role players. Um, you know, does Dylan Brooks have irrational confidence at times? Yes, mm-hmm. but that's something that he can learn to, you know, to taper and yeah. to control. And I, I thought he did a great. I thought he, I thought he did a great job of moving the ball. Like I thought. There's times where, you know, Dylan would have touched his hand and go up, and he did a great job of making the right pass, the right read. So mm-hmm. he's maturing, he's growing. And, you know, and I think... I think this you know, actually this, this run actually helps him, too. I think this will help him, too, going forward, as being, yeah, in terms of being a, a leader. Yeah, and you have to be a basketball... When you play FIBA, you have to be a basketball player. You can't just play basketball. You have to be very smart, high IQ, because you see the ball moves, passing, cutting, you're reading the defense. You have to anticipate where the, next, where the defense is going to be where the next pass is going to go. So I think that's just going to help him at the NBA level because now there's so much more iso ball. It's going to be easier for him to make the lead and know where the ball is going and cut yeah. and move. And if you and look at the teams that win in the NBA, the offense, they, don't, they, they rely less on iso ball and a lot of ball movement, right? And you have a lot of body movement along with the ball movement. So I think, you know, this is going to do a, a lot for Dylan, making him a better basketball player, understanding that. Um, understanding when to make the right pass and when to shoot. Mm-hmm. But more importantly, um, you know, he's just going to be, be, be that guy that just brings the defense. The defense toughness, the tenacity, right? Again, holding guys accountable and not being afraid to guard the best player. I think stuff, having players like that is so invaluable because now you know, you know, as a teammate, you can, you know, there's a certain level of, of ease in your mind. Not, there's no fear. There's no worry because you know what? We got somebody like Dylan who's going to go guard him and make him work hard. We're not going to, we don't, I'm not going to worry that this guy's going to light us up because I know Dylan, he might score, but he's going to have to work hard for it, which is what we want. Mm-hmm. Right? And, and there's a certain, there's a certain level of, okay, comfort and ease when you have uh, a defensive player like that and when you have an offensive player that can just give you buckets whenever you want. So those are the intangibles that, you know, allow teammates to play with a certain level of freedom, right? And a certain level of, um, energy and, and um, intensity when they know they have teammates that will alleviate some of the anxiety and fear that they have on the offensive end and on the defensive end. So, um, <laughs> so helicopter on, on the team light skin airplane uh, on the helicopter, I should say, we got, uh, the head coach of, uh, of red rushes, uh, Ontario's AAU program, Mr. Randall Walter, who put the gas in, the gas in the car to, to to spear this emergency pod talking about Team Canada. So we're coming in halfway through, but we got to talk about Shea. We got to talk about Shea. And I'm, I'm going to start the, the this with, with, with O'Neal first. I know you've had some ties with them. Um, last year, the evolution of Shea, because right now Shea's game jumped a level and a half, I would say, to the point where he made first team all NBA you know, coming from a team that didn't even make the playoffs, which I think that's an underrated great fact. And with what we've been seeing in the world championships, I'm I, like, I have my opinions on this, but I want to hear from the two of you. Going forward, is is he going to be staying at a top five level going forward, or at worst top ten? What what is your thoughts, O'Neal? I, I want I want to hear your thoughts because I I got some things to say on this. Uh, yeah, like what <laughs> I think what. People don't understand is, and I'm fucking excited. I'm like, I'm excited to talk about Shea. But go on, sorry, not to cut you off. Go ahead, go ahead. Shea is like the reason why he's at the level he's at now 
working on his body, he started lifting, working on his cardio. Like, it, you should see his off-season workout is bananas. He's working on his cardio, his stamina level, and he's gotten stronger. Hey, if you look at him before hey, and after pictures, he's gotten stronger. And, and, not, That's to, why, and not to cut you off, O'Neal, because that was one of my biggest questions. What the hell happened that last off-season for where, where this, this game jumped a level and a half? Because it didn't jump a level. It jumped like a level and a half. This is why you, this is why you always tell guys, you try to get young players to understand the importance of weight training. Not that, they don't have to get big, you know, bulk up, but you know, start even if it's just body resistance, just start working on your body, working on your movement, natural squat movements, lunge movements, sh- you know, shoulder presses. Right when they're a young age, and then obviously as they get older, you know, they can start adding the weights and you know, really get serious with the weights. So Shay basically just started weight training. He just started getting bigger. He starts getting stronger. So you can see, that's why he can shut defenders when guys are draped all over him. He's giving them little bumps. And as a, it increases your shooting range. Now you're getting stronger. You have more muscle endurance to, to do things. Your cardio endurance to do things. And the range of your shot increases. That's why he can shoot the mid-range. The mid-range is just a flick of the wrist. It's yeah. effortless to shoot the mid-range. Shoot the three is easy. So is, is where he's going to go I, I'm just so excited to see because the fact that he's lifting weights and he's gotten stronger and it's it's not like he's, he's what's great about it too is he put on the right amount sort of like how Jordan got bigger slowly he put on 5 pounds each year, this year. just yeah. slowly putting on 5 pounds as opposed to put on a, you know a lot of like 20 pounds or 25 pounds or 15 pounds Shea is slowly adding weight but he's also getting stronger. And I think that's what took his game to a next level. And that's what's going to continue to bring him to a next level because he's so cerebral as well. Yeah. And so as the game starts slowing down to where he knows what a defender is going to do before he does it, he's going to be freaking cooking these guys. And his change of speed, his change of speed his, the way he uses his length. I'm so excited to watch this guy just massacre dudes and how he just picks them apart and and how he scores effortlessly now. And all it has to do with the weight training. Sorry, go ahead. Now, Randall, hop in. Hop in. What, do you, what, what is your thoughts on the evolution of Shea from the last offseason to, obviously, the, the season he had this year in the NBA, but especially what he's been doing this summer? Well, I mean, first and foremost, I think, I mean, O'Neal has some great insight on him and knows him personally. So it gives it, it gives a, a good perspective on, on what he's done, but from an outsider looking in, you know, the the thing that I've always been impressed from the time I saw him play as a youth was his 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 change of pace, O'Neal said. Yeah. Um he, he has a tempo to the game. It's 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 kinda like he methodically like lulls you then but what I've noticed it, and it's it's interesting that what O'Neal said about his weight training, because you can see that he's always had a he's always been athletic, he had a quick first step. But yeah. his first step now is even more explosive, so he's getting more exactly. separation, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, like, the, yeah, you can see the strength is one of them. His separation is another. You know, I think I think he still has some ways with his shot. I think his, his mid range, everyone knows. I think he still has to work on the three, which will mm-hmm. destroy the game once he gets like a knockdown three. But the the thing that has impressed me the most, more than anything, I, I, I've always seen his confidence. But his confidence right now, like Team Canada confidence, is at another level. It's like it's like O'Neill said, he is he has this demeanor about him that's Jordan esque. Where it's like like, you know, when they were celebrating like because they won the game, he was like, Yo, guys, chill, chill, chill. Yeah. He, when right. you put the ball in his hands, he's like, dude, give me the ball. I'm gonna don't worry about it. I'm gonna get a bucket. Like he knows. He can get. He knows he can score on anybody in the world, which is scary, right? Um, and 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 you know, everyone talks about his offense, but I, and you know, I, I remember talking to Dwayne about this at one point. Washington, was very close with him, and I remember laughing, being like, "Yo, D, you, you guys worked so much on his offense. This defense is horrendous." But when remember that one time in the bubble, how crazy bad his defense was. But it yeah. got to the point because he's put on that strength. It's helped him even defensively to not be a liability on the floor, yeah. right? So it's to me to watch the three hundred and sixty of his evolution come around is scary. Like everyone, like you know, I, I, I have a lot of boys in the U.S. and they always did like, like clown Canadian players. They don't got this. They don't got that. I don't think I know one 
that that can't say they love, they're a Shea fan. I don't know one that's like you know what he might be my favorite player, right? Yep. And he he just has he just take, for him to do this on the world stage is is the most impressive thing ever, the most impressive thing ever. So I mean, like you know, see, like I I look at it holistically. This guy, like you said top. I I def, I think he's definitely going to be in the conversation of top five next season. I mean, look. You got Luca talking about how good he is, you know? Everybody's talking about how good he is. I was listening to NBA radio. They normally, you know, it's always about US, US. The whole segment was Canada. The whole segment. I've never heard in my life. The whole segment was Canada, and, 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 and a good chunk of that was talking about um, Shea. So, yeah, no. Um, he, he's going to take this. To, to whole new levels in next year in the NBA, probably a, a MVP candidate. And I think he's definitely going to garner. If they win this next game, I think it's a shoe-in, lock-in. Right now, it's a lock-in. He's going to be the FIBA MVP, I think. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But if they win this game, it's not even a doubt he's a FIBA MVP. So Yeah, yeah. I, think, I think he's definitely – what I'm excited about is not first team was just the beginning. He's going to have mm-hmm. many more. Yeah. He's mm-hmm. going to be other – He's gonna be he's gonna be making it tough because I listen to guys like Bill Simmons, I listen to Stephen H. Smith, and you know yeah. when these guys talk about um, you know uh, Ryan Osillo, these guys are talking about ranking all NBA teams. You know he's gonna make it tough on these guys, guys like these to be like, where do you put Shea? You know Shea first team NBA. Second. Like this is where he's gonna. This is where I think he is now. Where when people start thinking about first team, it's like, where do you put Shea Gilgis? Right? Mm-hmm. He's gonna be an all star. He's gonna be multiple all star now. So I'm just so excited for him, man. I think it's, and he's just, I love, as you said, Randall, his temperament. I love Shay's temperament. Which like, has always been there. I remember. Which has actually always yeah, been remember, there, though. For always. I mean, he was a little kid. But what struck, what struck me the most was when I went to the NBA draft, when RJ was that year, RJ got drafted. And we were, you know, I was in the, in the VIP in the back. And Shay was there. And he was just so quiet. He was, Shay the Sharp actually reminds me of him, too. Like, they're just so quiet. They're just honest. They, they're that's not. A, they're, sorry, that's another guy we forget about with Team Canada. But go on. Yeah. They're not, they're, yeah. They're yeah not we forget about Shaden. Yeah. We forget oh about him, God. too. Well, oh, my yeah, God. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah I, I, he's he's going to be dangerous. I don't think he, yeah. I don't know about him playing with Canada for this round. But the future rounds? Oof. No, you never know. Yeah. Um, yeah. But go on, yeah, sir. Go, think, on. go on. Go yeah. on. Go on. Like, he was there. And maybe one or two kids came up to him, but he was just there. And because yeah, you know, I mean, Ahmad Rashad was there, Sharif Abdul Rahim was there, mm-hmm. um, like Spike Lee was there. Like, just you see some NBA royalties, but Shane was just there, quiet with the um, with the representative. And he didn't have a big entourage. Yeah, you know, he's not wearing big flashy jewelry, and he wasn't bringing attention. He was just very. He was in a nice suit, and he was just there chilling. And, uh, you know, obviously I saw him and maybe, I get, like I said, one or two kids recognize him, but, and that's what I love about Shane. He just, so he just, you know, when they say bad my move in silence and violence, Shane just reminds me of that. He put him mm-hmm. on, he's just so quiet. Mm-hmm. And then he comes on the court and then he just massacres you. And those are guys I like. They don't huff and puff. They don't draw attention to themselves. They just, you know, move a certain way. And then when they mm-hmm. get on the court, they just, this, Sure, you and I think that's why he resonates with so many people because he's just so chill. He's a chill dude, right? He's into yeah. his fashion. Just a really different cat. Just quiet, no attention seeking. Sometimes you won't even know he's in the room, but then when he steps on that court, he just proceeds to surgically dismantle you. And that's what I love about Shay. And here's what's what's interesting is this because same similar kind of story because I saw him at. Um, my nephew had a chance to play in the – it was a signature, the All-Canadian Showcase. I think it was in 2019, I think they had it at, uh, when it was mm-hmm. at Ryerson. And he was yeah. there. He was one of the players that was there. Same thing to your point, O'Neal. He was by himself, and he was cool. Like, I, I think I, I think I did approach him and say what up to him and just tell him, hey, congratulations, because that was his rookie year. And I was like, congratulations on a, on, a, on a rookie year. And he was so humble with it, and he was just so cool. But he didn't have, like – 10, 15 people hanging off and waiting around him. Like he was, mm-hmm. there was, there was points where there was, there was like a I think like even at halftime, like he took the ball and just started dribbling and shooting around. 
And I'm like, I'm like, yo, what the hell? Like, what am I watching here? You know what I mean? And like, yep. this is an, this is a guy just finished his NBA his, his rookie year. This isn't the guy that's trying to get a scholarship. You know what I mean? But he yep. was just sitting there, just taking little layups. Sure. You know, yeah, just shooting like 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 how we would like if we had the ball with us and at halftime. And you know what I mean? You just have rank on on the organizers. So you just like, ah, let me just get a couple of shots up before the, the teams come off the court, come back on the court. So when you okay. when you see him to that point, to your point, like he's. That was really cool to see. So it sounds like he never that's never really left, which I think is great. I would disagree. Seems to love the game. Yeah. Oh, hell yeah. Absolutely. But I want to disagree with O'Neal with a, on a point that he made where you're saying, like, when the game slows down. I think the game's already slowed down. Mm. I think it's already slowed down for him. Be, like, it's getting good. Uh, yeah. yeah. I, don't get me wrong. I, I think I think it's, it's going to slow down more. But I think – Right now, at this point, like it's it's almost like you know when you get to the to the last level of the video game, like you've you've figured it out now. You know what I mean? Like you've like he's he's made that massive leap that that kind of reminds me of it reminds me of three people. It reminds me of T Mac right when he left the Raptors in his first season with with Orlando. It reminds me of that leap where you're just like, yo, where the hell did this guy come from? What the hell's going on there? I saw this guy four months ago. He wasn't like this. It reminds me of Gilbert Arenas when he left Golden State and he got to Washington. And probably not even the first season, but like the second season where you're like, whoa, what just happened here? And all, like he went from a guy that was like, maybe he could make the all-star team to all of a sudden you're like, yo, this, what's, what's going on? This guy's an MVP candidate. What just happened here? What just happened here? And, and the other guy to me to, um, is Steve Nash. Because 22, 23 years ago when, when they played in the Olympics – Nash took that experience, and to me, it changed his NBA career right after he left. But but the only, think, well, the only difference is that Shea is already an All-NBA player, a first-team All-NBA player, and he's now having this experience. So I'm kind of excited to see where that is, where he's going to take with that experience and this summer and this year and what he's going to bring to it for the, for, uh, the 2024 season. The reason why I say that is because I remember Nash said it and LeBron said it, and they said, Having been in the league for over 10 years, eventually the game got to a point where um, you knew everything that was going to happen before it happened. Right. Like once they right. stepped, and that's and that's where Nash talked about that, and that's where LeBron and LeBron talked about that, and that's what I'm saying with and Kobe and mm-hmm. you know guys who played a long all time. The great players, yeah. yeah, all the great players. Eventually, the game you just see them move. The reason why, like you just see the way they move, like Chris Paul, Dame Lillard. Like, you see the way they move. Because they know what's going to happen. They've already gone through all... Because there's only so many scenarios that we played out on the basketball court. And mm-hmm. because they've read those scenarios so many times um, in their career, the amount of games that they played, they know exactly what's going to happen. It's just a matter of making those shots. And you can see it in the way they move on the court, how they just get to their spots. Like, where LeBron... You know, I, I love watching LeBron play. Just an old man dissecting. Like, he's just on a different level at the pace that he plays. Like, he just knows, I don't have to run that fast. I can get right here. I can walk and get where I'm going. And it's, for me, you know, on that level, it's just great to watch. He'll never be better than Kobe and Jordan. But, you know, I just I just love watching him play at that level because it's just so slow for him now. He knows exactly what's going to happen. Yeah. He can walk and get to his spots and still get his shot off. Right, that's why he, he just, it's just, it's cerebral. He's toying with guys right now. It's just so cerebral for him. And, you know, I think sh- that's where she's going to get to. Yeah. Right. Like, I think, you know, when I say slow, you know, it's, it's slowed down. You're right, Calvin, but I just think it's going to get even slower. Slower. Yeah. Right. And then he's just really going to, he's just going to really massacre guys with his athleticism already with his change of speeds. And, you know, um, I think once, right now he's, he's tapping into his scoring. I think, obviously, the next level. Because before, remember, at the beginning, he was a facilitator. Coming out of Kentucky, he was a facilitator. The scoring was there. But I think the next level, Shea, you know, the challenge for him now is probably going to be, like, triple doubles. Yeah. At 6'7", seven, at 6'7", seven, can he get triple doubles now? Mm-hmm. Like, that's, you know, like, like Jordan said, I think Jordan said it, you know, triple doubles is a point guard stat, right? It's right. really a, a, a point guard stat because... You're looking at ten or ten or more assists, right? And that's usually a point guard facilitating, yeah. and not only scoring but also rebounding. So, you know, I think 
that's the next evolution for Shea is, okay, let me start at 6-7, let me start rebounding the ball, mm -hmm. but also let me start really facilitating. It might even be more dangerous once I start now really making that, you know, the right pass to the right teammate at the right time. You know, now when the defense comes to help, they have to start second-guessing. Yeah. And that's going to really make it easier for me to score. So, yeah, man, I think, you know, this kid's going to be special, man. And he's going to be special for years to come. And what's crazy is you look at the stats, and I knew he was a 30-point scorer. I didn't realize it was 31 and a half points a game that he averaged last year. And when you watch yeah. him play in this, in this atmosphere, which is, I mean, that's, that's crazy. Because the year before he averaged like 23, 24, he made like a seven, eight point leap, like 31 and a half points a game. I know the game is different, but you know, that's a crazy leap, you know? Yeah. And, 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 but you, but the way you're watching him score, like that number is not coming down. Even in the world championships to your point, Randall, like, yeah, like I think, I think he has it locked up to pre me personally, where he should have it locked up the MVP of the, of the world championships. But when you're watching him score, he's getting to these 30 points easy. It's so efficient. It's so easy. The way he's getting to these thirty points, it, that that's the part to me where I'm like, "Fuck!" Like I I didn't see that part coming. Like that part is scary because when you haven't figured out to that degree and you're 24, uh, I, I wow. I, I, and that's where you see the conditioning and the strength training because you see defenders trying to make him work. He's like, "Yeah, whatever, man." He's just you know he's just crossing them over and going by them. Right, they're trying to body him, and he's just, you know, he's just shutting it. He's just laughing it off, right? He's just not, it doesn't even affect him. Because, again, the weight training, the conditioning, you know, he, he's building his body to take these these abuse when guys are trying to hit him and grab him and, yeah. you know, turn him. He's like, yeah, whatever. You, you, and know, then, you know, you know, he reminds me of, like, uh, he to me, he's the, <laughs> he's the, he's because the, I'm a big NFL fan too, but like he he's the basketball equivalent to me of of like Le'Veon Bell or like a Priest Holmes from back in the day, where it's like mm -hmm. you know they're going through the through, through the line and it's it's so meticulous they're waiting they're waiting they're waiting they're waiting for that hole and then bam they're gone like that's to yep. me is how he plays basketball, he plays basketball well, like that. Yep, that's a good analogy. Just like that, just he's patient and just picks your point. I'll tell you what though. You know, with with Ja messing up like the the way that he's been messing up uh, off the court, the league is trying to give the NBA in terms of of, of upcoming superstar. They're gonna try to give it to Edwards, but I, I feel like Shea's got like a real shot to be one of the main faces of the league, depending on how, how OKC does this this season. Because everybody's well, gone. Sorry, I, I think I think I think it depends if they if Canada can get to the finals. That's gonna. It's going to blow up his stock. He, his stock is high right now. It's going to blow it up even more. Shoot. It's going to blow up a lot of their stocks. Like, I, yeah. personally, I don't, I don't know if you all spoke about it, but I, I think Dylan Brooks oh, yeah. has been as, as impressive considering where he, he ended his NBA season, right? Mm -hmm. Like, stocks are going high. Um, yep. Um, you know what I'm happy for? I'm happy for Nikhil. I, yeah, thought Nikhil I, I, I don't think Nikhil's impressed me as much as he did when they played in Victoria. I thought he, he really impressed me, Victoria. I think he's had moments where he's impressed me, like he played well against Spain. But overall, I don't know if he was that impressive to me. He had a, great, you know, he had, he had a good game today, though, for sure. It's probably the yeah, best. Yeah, I only watched the second half, so I didn't have a chance to watch the first half yet. I'm going to try to watch it today. But, I, I mean, even today, like, he was good. But, like, again, I, I, I think... There's only been one game where he had a bad game. Like, he's been consistent all throughout. Right? He's been dropping anywhere from 12 to 15 points. Like, he's coming off the bench. That's good yeah, not for a bench efficiently, player. though. Like, I don't think his numbers are efficient. Like, his three, three point, he's streaky three point shooter. No, yeah. no, no, no. He's, he's, he's one of the best three point shooters on the team. That's what they're, I'm telling you. Like, if you listen to the commentators, he's, he's, he's one of the, the few guys that have been shooting the three ball well for China. He had one bad game. I think it was the Brazil, Brazil game yeah. where he he went he's one terrible, for eight. Yeah. He went one for eight. Other than that, he's been consistent. He's been solid, double figures every game except for that. I think that Brazil game. So, I, and I, what I was going to say was, I, I thought he did a great job in the playoffs against OKC when he had to when he had to guard shit. I thought he just did a great job there. Yeah. I thought his stock kind of rose there, and I think what he's doing here, he's showing guys that he can. You know, he's playing well, and I think his stock is going to rise. 
Um, I think he, you know, he's basically solidified himself to be a, a journeyman in the NBA. And as maybe, you know, you weren't sure if he was going to last. I think he's definitely going to last. I think he's going to be around. And I think he's going to be somebody, uh, based on what he did in the playoffs against uh, Shea, against OKC, and what he's doing, I think he's going to be a guy people are going to have on the, you know, look at him differently, like, you know what? Maybe can we can use him as a 3 and D to put him on point guards. Because I thought he did a great job defensively. And I think he's showing, um, even even in the tournament, defensively, he, he's, he's doing a great job of guarding players, turning guards, getting steals. So I think his stock definitely rose as well, along with Dylan and and, uh, mm-hmm. and yeah. Like I, Like I said, to me, I, I think Ja kind of, Jaws fucking up kind of opened up the window for for a guy like Edwards, who's American. He's gonna get that press. He's gonna get that 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 push, especially the way he's been playing because he's coming. That train is coming. Uh-huh. But I think uh-huh. Shay is like that's the humble guy. But that that guy is go is like he's about to fly through the window head first. That that jaw open, like and I and, and, and I think what people don't realize is that because what's gonna happen is coming into this season, everybody's gonna talk about they're gonna talk about him the way he's been playing. There's going to be a large focus on on Chet Holmgren, and you know, especially with comparisons with him and Wemby. That's that's what's going to start it at first. But I think casuals are going to start realizing how elite Shea is going to be. And I think now that Jaws opened this window up, I'm not saying he's going to close it shut because I think Jaws too spectacular to be ignored. But but I think Shea Shea's not going back. I don't know the kid that well, right? <laughs> but I'm just looking at because most players when they make this leap especially this kind of leap, they don't give that spot back up unless they get hurt. Like what, like with yeah. Arenas and with, uh, with T-Mac, those guys got hurt towards the end, especially Arenas got hurt earlier. But when those guys make that leap or like a Nash makes that leap, that's it. They don't, give, they don't go back. They don't go back. That's it. I've been, Shea, Shea has been ascending from Kentucky. He's been going up. Yeah. yeah he's been going yeah. up since he, he's been improved, getting better and better year after year. He's not... That's what I love about him. He's not. He's not satisfied. He, he's. He's. The ceiling is so high for him. He just wants to get better and better. And he's taking every. He's just like absorbing things, and then he's processing it, and then he's training it out, and then he's. He's just adding it to his game. He's learning from his mistakes. He's learning from things that's happening. He's just getting better. That's why I'm excited for him. So yeah. That's why it's one of those guys. He's landed, and he's going to be here for a while. He's not going to just. He's not going to be a flash in the pan. He's not going to just no. now. He's not that guy that's going to get money and then just disappear. He's like, oh. he wants to, you know, he's he's on a mission, you know, and he just wants to be great. And he doesn't brag about it, doesn't talk about it, but you can just see the way he moves and the way he plays the game. He's just getting better and better every year. And, you know, when it's all sitting down, he's going to be one of the, you know, one of the best that play this game. Yeah, but the best thing about it is, is his play is now translating to wins. Mm-hmm. Right, like it's all it, it, you could. It, you 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 said it before. Like his game has like from Kentucky. Like he came into Kentucky. There was a lot of people like, who the hell is this guy, and how the hell did he get to Kentucky, right? And mm-hmm. then you know the one and done. And then when he, when he left, everyone was like, yeah, he had a good you know freshman year, but eh, I don't know. Then he came to the league, and was like, who is this guy, right? And every mm-hmm. year he's gotten better. But you know, it, I remember when it was Doc, right? Doc was like, man. It was hard to let go of him. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I remember Doc was like, "Ooh, oh man, I don't think people know how good he is." Mm-hmm. Chris yeah, Paul spoke highly of him, right? Yeah. The whole rebuild in OKC is not a rebuild anymore. He's leading the charge, and and, and mm-hmm. again, like last year, did any of y'all have have uh, OKC pegged to be a bubble team? Nope, nope, no. Right? And who did it again? Like they had a they have a nice young upcoming squad. But without Shea, they, there's no way they make it even close to to, to a bubble. Yep. And, yeah, and, yeah, and so he, he changes oh. the, the trajectory of the, of the franchise in terms of like the rebuild and stuff. That yep. that all changed. I'm I'm going out to get Dylan Dylan Brooks type players. I'm gonna go get some role players, some dogs, some defensive guys. Because right. you have Josh. This is the great thing about OKC. You move Josh Giddy to the point guard. Yeah. He's your two guard. Your score. You have that's it, Jalen Williams. As a third player, but then you have Chet Holmgren. You have another, so you have some right, some great offensive pieces right there. And Shea is at the right. You know, he's what four or five years in, so he's not a rookie, but he's perfect. He knows how to score. So you have your score right there that's gonna, you know, that could get you buckets whenever you want. You have a facilitator in Giddy. 
and you have a nice big. And, you know, the great thing about Holmgren is he's willing to play defense. He has some interior defense. Now, if he gets some perimeter defense, well, I, what am I talking about? They got Lou Dort. I thought totally forgot. They got Lou. So they got the right pieces, right? And now with a score like Shea, right? I mean, people got to watch out for OKC, man. Like, you know, people better not sleep on OKC because, you know, they can make some noise. It's funny. I was having this conversation with um, with with my brother about um, the point I was making was I'm like, you know, everybody's talking about in the Western Conference are talking about, you know, because with the NBA coming up next month, we're going to do all the previews and all of that. But like everybody's talking about how the West is so strong and they keep mentioning the same teams. They keep mentioning the Lakers. They keep mentioning the Warriors and with good reason. But I'm like to be the reason why the West is going to be crazy is because I think those young teams are coming. It's, it's it's about to be their turn, you know what I mean. So and and I think like a team like like New Orleans because obviously it depends on on Zion that beast in in um, in New Orleans. Like if he's healthy, then it changes everything in the league. But I think teams like Sacramento is another one, and and OKC is another one too, because what we're yep. seeing here with Shea, like like let's let's not get this twisted. Shea's right now just based on what he accomplished just this last season. Like Shea right now is going to be a three hundred million player by the time his, he's up for contract in a couple of years. Like mm-hmm. that's that's going to be the that's going to be the minimum. That's going to be the minimum for that Jalen Green that Jalen Brown contract that he you know that just set the the standard for the the highest paid athlete in the NBA history. Like that's going to be his baseline by the time this is done, right? Like just just oh. just the work he's done so far. That's going to be his baseline. So we're watching a superstar built in real time coming from Canada. And it's going to look a lot different than what Nash made it look like because Nash, you know, was the humble guy that loved to pass. He's going to make this look different. And it, this is, this is, this is the exciting part because like, I think he's going to do things in the league that a, that a, a player from Canada hasn't done or not yeah. since Nash at the very least, not since Nash, this is the $300 million player coming down the pipeline. And I think for some people they're like, where is this coming from? And you're right. When he was at Kentucky, I liked him from Kentucky because I, like, for some reason that year, I watched a lot of their games and I heard the hype about SGA. And I didn't, I didn't really see him. I didn't see him in high school, but by the time he finished at Kentucky, I was like, "Yo, that that player is nice." And when he got to the Clippers, to your point, Randall, where where, where Doc was like, "Man, it was hard to give up SGA for Paul George." Looking back, I understood why they did it, but you're like, he's so young and such a talent. This could bite them in the ass. And right now, if you're the Clippers, would you would you trade back for SGA for Paul George? I think you would. Hell yeah. Yeah, of course. I think you would. I think you would yeah. have to. Because because imagine imagine that mentality and he's healthy with a Kawhi now. Mm-hmm. What are we talking about here? You know what I mean? And and mm-hmm. this is this is not a knock on Paul George. Paul George is tight. But I'm like, but that's how good and how young this is gonna go on. This could go on for years. Like I know we know, but I think there sh- there should be a lot more hype around Shea. I I think it- this is still underrated, like what he's doing here right now. And I don't think there's enough hype about this. I think this is cra- like I think what he's doing is crazy, but I but I think it's 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 like a mushroom cloud's about to blow under or like over his name. And I don't think people are seeing. There's still some people that aren't seeing it in in this way yet. They're saying like, what? "Wow, he's having a great tournament." I'm like, "No, this is the future." No, man, me, this, no. Like, this is the people future. People are talking. The the, the the headline of FIBA is Shea Alexander, right? That's Gil, Gil Alexander. It, that's the headline. Like, I'm telling you, man, like, I've been getting calls about him. I've been, people are like, yo, like, I didn't know he was that nice. I knew he was nice. Yo, I, I was listening to NBA radio. I don't know if you, I listened to it all day. <laughs> and they talked about Shea half of the day. They talk about Canada about twenty five percent and Shea the other twenty five percent. Like like we're like what we're doing now. <laughs> Precisely. Yep. Right. I, I, listen, I couldn't believe how much chatter there was on Team Canada. Mm-hmm. I just couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe it. And and not even that. Callers calling in and and almost bashing Team USA and saying, "Yo, people are are rooting for Canada to win the gold. They don't even want... Americans don't even want them to win because they're ashamed <laughs> that we they sent a team like that out there that probably could still win it all. They're, they're, they're saying we went too, they went too cocky going out there with that team. Mm-hmm. And they're like, you know what? I, I hope Canada beats them. It's a wake-up call for us to send our best team out. 
And we don't. And then, and then the hosts are like, "Yeah, but Canada doesn't even have its best team." That's the scary part. Facts. Yeah, facts. We because we... they're like, well, America. They're like Canada. Like you're talking about, arguably, like outside of Shea, you could arguably say like Jamal Murray and Shea could be the like the best backcourt in the world. It is the best mm-hmm. backcourt in the world. It is. Oh, well, arguably, is, is 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 Steph Curry and Tatum better? Yeah, yeah, you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. It, 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 it's arguably right. Like uh, the, you know, I I don't know if it, 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 it'd, be, it'd be a show to watch. Put it that way. Yeah, it's it's definitely top two or three for sure because I think Jamal's an all star. Like he he hasn't had the 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 official recognition or title yet, but he's an all star. I think I think that's where he's at now. But but here's here's my last question though to to wrap up here. Like, are we finally going to be on the podium stand in eleven months? Like. So I guess it's two questions. Are we finally going to be on the podium stand in 11 months in Paris? And also, are we going to get the gold, you know, in four days at the World Championship? Uh, I'm optimistic. I, I Listen, the goal is goal. But I think, you know, I think we meddle. That's what my, I think, let's take baby steps. I think we meddle. I, I do still think the USA just has more depth, right? Um, I, I, I personally think that U.S. is going to, if Germany takes them down and we beat, um, Serbia, Serbia, then I think we have a, a really good chance of taking a home. If it's in a, if it's in a, a USA versus Canada, it's going to be tough. It's going to be a dog fight. I, I think, I think, you know, USA is better than Spain. Um, now going into the Olympics. That's going to be a whole different game because every country is going to load up with their, their better players. So every team that's good now is only going to get better. Like you're going to get Porzingis back. You're, you know, with, with Latvia, you're going to get um, the Joker back with Serbia. You know, U.S. is going to freaking come back with the you know, full force. Even though I'm hearing that a lot of guys don't want to go to Olympics, I think depending on how they finish, you know, it's gonna. I, I think guys are gonna commit, and that's gonna be a harder team. So that's more than anything. Like it's all contingent on on what. Like I hate to say this, but I think Canada will fuck it up. We just have to find a way. Like I think we've come so far, but we whoever's in charge. I don't know if it's Ron Barrett. I don't know who it is. But the way you find a way to fuck something up, right? Like you know, a clause of saying, "Oh, you know what? We don't want." Um, we're not going to take Wiggins back because they didn't have a three-year commitment. You fucked that up, right? Or I heard some something about, I was talking to someone the other day that's close with Chris Boucher, and I was like, why is Boucher not really involved in Canada? Apparently, he, him too, he has some some scars, some shit that happened to him a few years ago and why he didn't, you know, like he got cut over somebody or, you know, and he was like, well, you know what? Then screw y'all. When y'all going to really, and, and this is before Boucher's Boucher, right? Um, you know, when he first, I think, got into the Raptors, right? He got cut, and he, he's been sour ever since. So, and I know he's injured, but uh, I, I think there's a lot of things that come into play. And the other thing is, like, you know, do you take guys um, that are not committed to King, King Canada, um, or do you load up on whoever wants to come? I, I'm, I'm the latter, and if we get loaded up, it's going to be scary hours. Like I think we medal for sure. I don't think it's gold. I think we medal again. Um, I, I yeah. think I think that's how we fuck it up. I think like we just said. I think the easiest way to do it is now we're going to Olympics. Now we take twelve NBA guys. Yeah. Right. Thank you. To, thank, thank you to all the non NBA guys that you know were that came out. But we're gonna yeah. we're gonna load, we're gonna load up with at base because at, at, at the simplest form. Taking 12 NBA guys because these guys are playing against the best players in the world. They Correct. Yeah. So, and, we, and we've seen it too, Neil. We've seen it with this. Like, the, 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 the bench was outside of, like, um, the kill. You know, Lou, Dort. Um, the really, the bench, there was no one. They, that was it. Like, right, right? So, you need, we need, it, we need size. We need some, a little bit more shooting. We need a guard. I, I, I don't know. So, outside of Murray, Wiggins, who else would you take? To win gold. Well, okay, so uh, you got Andrew, I would take. I'm taking Andrew Nembhard. I yeah, don't care. That, I would take Andrew Nembhard. I was about to yeah. say that's number one. 
It's cause it's, because it's, cause I think especially like playmaking and ball handling and, and she, shot creation. She, mm-hmm. she will not have to work as hard to score. Yeah. And it, it just opens up the offense more because when people start, you start running, running pin down and, Screens yeah. to get Shea open, and when people are trying to switch out on that, Andrew's going to find the big that's slipping through the alley. I'll take Andrew. Hold on, hold on. Some... Yeah, hold on, hold on. Before you, I'm with you on it. I'm not. I'm playing devil's advocate. So you like if, if we're going to add a guard, you, you really it's going it's, it's to replace what's his name, Trey Bell. So you would take and 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 um, Nembar over Corey Joseph. I know Corey's old and all, but w- w- you would. Yes, I would. I, I'm just playing devil's advocate. Yeah, I, listen. I, I, nobody loves Corey more than I do. I love Corey, but I would take Andrew over. I like Andrew. I love Andrew. Yeah, I think he's great. Andrew, bro. Andrew reminds me of Jason Kidd. I would take Andrew over. That's fair. Okay. He, he, so he has that. Rick Carlisle creaming in his pants, bro. That's how great Andrew is as a point guard. Yeah. That's how much Rick Carlisle loves Andrew, and you see it. Andrew is when people talk about a maestro. Andrew runs an offense, bro. He will pick with Andrew running point. There will be more movement in the offense because I'm, Andrew I'm will with find. You. I'm with you. I'm just Andrew I'm will just, find. I would take yeah. Andrew. I would take. He doesn't want to go because again, Canada basketball screwed him over mm-hmm. um, a few years ago. Um, I would take uh, O'Shea. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's, you know, I would take O'Shea Brissett because again, he's coming off the bench. He's going to give you solid. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's going to be he's another solid big, solid guy. Um, so Andrew O'Shea, because we have seven NBA guys right now. We have seven, mm-hmm. believe, right? So mm-hmm. you need five more. So you have Andrew uh, O'Shea, Jamal, um, Jamal, you take Jamal, because Jamal, Jamal, Jamal only didn't play just to rest for you know after the long season first day, yeah. Yeah. first year coming off of that knee surgery. You know what right. I mean? It's expected that he wouldn't play this year, but you know he's, he's probably going to yeah. play next year. Yeah, and O'Shea was they, supposed to play too, and he, he hurt his knee. So okay. that's, those yeah. two were essential. Yeah, exactly. yeah. So you have those. So that that gives you there's three, and I don't know. Um, I guess another big we have is who Trey Lyles, right? I don't know how you know I would go with Trey Lyles, or maybe even um, uh, what's his big out of Montreal that played for O'Shea? Raptors? No, uh, the other one, Birch. Um, Birch. Yes, take take a big. If you want to go with a big. Um, who else? What about Ben Mandarin? And, and I was thinking of between Ben and Sharp and Shaden because they're yeah. both, you know, the same. So, um, you know, either Ben or, or Shaden. And there's your, there's your 11. There's your 12. There's your 12 NBA guys. And you're good. You know, you're good. You, you keep, you have, you're going to have the white and, you have the white and, uh, and, uh, Kelly. And Kelly as your bigs, you know, big in the middle, banging. But you you can get scoring from, and Andrew's just gonna run that offense. But you can get scoring, you know, you can you score from RJ, you can score from Shea, you know, Dylan will try and score, um, you know, yeah, man. And, and, what about and, big, what about uh, Zach Eady? You wouldn't, you know you wouldn't what? Take I was just about no. that. I was, you wouldn't take him. I was just no. about to bring him up no. only because I'm like, we don't no. know what what he's gonna build into next season. We're like, would he help on size wise going next? I know he's not contributing no. now, but. No. Okay. You know, actually, no. You know who I would take? Actually, I wouldn't take O'Shea. I would take uh, Nick Sauskis. He's six seven. He give me two point shooting. I would take Sauskis. The shooting. Played in the league. What I about think, Nate Darling? Or Nate Darling. But I like Sauskis because he's six seven. He needs shooting. Oh, we do lack like that. Yeah. That. He needs some. That's why. That's why I would actually take Nate Darling or um, or Nick Sauskis to give us shooting. The might tell shooters just catch and shoot guys. Um, so that, that's a, that's the 12, 12 NBA guys I would take. I know Southkins is not in the league, but you know he played in the NBA for played, four years. Yeah. So I would, I would, I would. Um, that's my twelve. I would take no knock on Edie, but they, they haven't used him at all really. This, this. So why would you, why would you bring him back next year? Well, like I um, said, to, to me it depends on how he how he develops next next year too. I mean he's. You know, we'll see. I guess we'll have to see what what happens mm-hmm. going into senior. What we'll What do you now. think? What do you think his development is going to be, Calvin? I, I, well, I'm thinking more because of the size factor. I guess we'll see. But why, we'll see. So what? He's not. He wasn't a factor this year. So what? What would What would change next year? I look, Come on, I man! Look, no, no, shout out Northern Kings, man. <laughs> <laughs> Zach starts shooting the three. Nothing's going to change. He's, 
I like listen. I, I like Zach Eady more than anybody. I like him. I don't. I think he's getting a raw deal. But if you're not using him now, you're not going to use yeah. him next year. Gonna yeah, yeah. Right? yeah. It's not like his game's going to change yeah. next year where you're going to. He's going to be serviceable. You know exactly. But you know, there's a, there's a, bro, there's a reason why the three best centers in the NBA didn't get in a, in college basketball never got drafted, and that's why Zach went back for another year. Mm. The game's changed, bro. Like the three best centers in college basketball never got drafted. Can you believe that? Which is oh, which, which, which is crazy. I still bring up this point Benami. though. Where, that I still bring up this point though that that if next year, like say Denver goes back to back, I still think this is my this is just my theory. I think if Denver wins again or or another big wins the NBA Finals next year, I think Edie gets drafted late first round. I think it changes. Wow. You know you know everything's a copycat league. I think, I'm not, and, I'm, and don't get me wrong. And don't, and don't get me wrong. Hold on, let me finish. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying they're going to draft him to be the face of a franchise, but I'm saying like, even if it's for six fouls, he's gonna, he's now going to get looked at. Whereas before, like now, like he has to go back to school. I think next Kevin, year, if, if that happens, I think, I think he gets drafted late first round. Kevin, That's just my opinion. If this was, if this was my podcast, I would have hung up on you. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, I don't see that at all. <laughs> I don't see that. And like I said, I could be wrong. I could be wrong. Uh, this is a pipe dream, probably. But listen, I, that's that's just, that's just what I think. Pipe dream. I, I I can't even see like the guy. Yeah, no, I don't see that, man. I don't see it getting you said, would be wrong. Listen, Calvin. I'm gonna star this podcast. Just <laughs> I'm gonna bookmark this podcast. Your your, your your stock now is going down. <laughs> 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 with centers, it's going, Calvin, it's going the other way. No, I know, I know, I know. I'm just, I'm just yeah, wishing yeah, well for the kid, man. I'm wishing well for the like, kid. It's going, it's going the way of Porzingis, Wembanyama, um, Holmgren, Jokic, bigs that can step out, shoot. No, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. Zach is just straight back to the basket. I listen, and I'm so happy for Zach. You know, don't get me wrong. I, I, I hope he does get drafted. Um, I think he does, You know, he's not as bad. You know, pick a little deal as people make out to be, but you know, he's just he's a back to the basket. That's not where the NBA is going anymore. In Europe, in FIBA or in Europe, he'll be great, right? Like he'll be a, another good. We don't even guy. use him in FIBA. How great could he be? But I'm just saying, if he played pro, if he played, I mean, like FIBA pro, when yeah, he's playing, if he's, pro played, if he's playing in the Spanish league and all that, yeah. you know, because they have, you know, they don't have the legal defense. So yeah, he could hang out in the key defense. He could drop do drop coverage or whatever. Um, you know, he can hang out in the key and help. And, you know, there's a lot of, as you notice in FIBA, there's a lot of bigs that do play with their back to the basket. They, they're basic bigs, traditional bigs who do drop steps, up and unders, jump hooks, whatever. But in the NBA, that, that, that shit won't fly. He's not, he's not, he's not, you know, he's not first round. Well, if those guys, if those three centers were better than Zach and they didn't get drafted, I don't think drafted, Zach is going to get drafted, but maybe he gets drafted. I don't know. I don't think so. Maybe he gets drafted second round. Um, but there's a reason why he went back to school, he went bro. back, yeah. Because ideally, was, based he, on what he accomplished, the, like that would be the guy, that would be the surefire the, way to leave, right? You 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 won the player of the year. You're gone. You're going to be the first player round of the year. In all, it, the year, like multiple, today, whatever, all these had him yeah. as player of the year. He won all the awards, basically. Awards. The guy went back to college. He didn't go to the NBA. Come on. Yeah, nothing's going to change next year. It's nothing's going to change. I don't know. Unless he starts shooting the three, nothing's going to change. As far as this year's concern in terms of the world championships at the very least, yes, the U.S. is bigger. They're deeper. And they, they got a better collection of all-stars than max players in Canada does, right? But to me, Canada is not afraid of that that matchup, you know, to your point, I know you no. early in the podcast, they they match up pretty well with them, and I think because obviously most of the guys on the roster has been playing against these guys for years, not just in the NBA, but for years, yeah. from AAU exactly. to, from AAU till now, so they they see these guys across the floor, they don't care, and and on top of that, when it comes down to it, Canada can legitimately say that they have the best player on the floor, and Dude. that means something in basketball. They Shay. do, yeah, yeah no, sure. you're. Like they they got Calvin, the best player on the floor. Brilliant. The best best comment you said all night. Your stock's going back up. There you go. There you go. That's it, Randall. I'm legitimate again. <laughs> Shit. Yes. <laughs> Bro, that, like 
And then you're going to say, well, Edie should start, right? <laughs> no, I can't. Yeah, then, calm then, down. Yeah, calm down. This is, this is, calm yeah. down. <laughs> so think about this. Like, but if you just think about this, right? Like, if you say, hey, you're on the Canadian roster, you're like, okay, they got Luke, they got Dylan. Dylan's a freaking pain in, in our ass. He's going to be up in Ann Edwards. Him and Ann Edwards, I know, are going to get into it. Yeah. Right? So he's going to go to Ann Edwards. Like, George's not afraid. RJ's not afraid. Like, but who do they have to stop Shea? Who are they going to put on Shea? Yeah. They don't have, who do they have? To put on Shea, who's the loose ball like Dylan that they're gonna put on Shea? They don't have anybody. Nobody. They don't have. Anybody. They don't have anybody, right? Our, Dylan's gonna get into Ann Edwards, right? Dorit's probably gonna get into Reeves, right? So who's they gonna put on Shea? Who's their best player? They're gonna who's their defender? They're gonna put on. So Shea's gonna be baiting these guys, barbecue chicken, going off, right? Whereas Ann Edwards is gonna have to work hard. He's probably gonna get caught up with Dylan, get into antics, and get out, get out of his game, start trash talking, right? So. Nah, man. If, if Canada matches up against Team USA, that's going to be a good game. I don't know. I don't think it's going to be a sure thing that Team USA is going to win. You know, Canada might win because. Oh, I, I, don't, I don't. I don't think it's a sure shot at all. I think yeah. I, I, I. You know, some some are saying some of the analysts were saying they would they see the best matchup for Canada to win gold is if they face US. Yeah, exactly. They say it's a better if they face Germany. They don't have, remember Canada struggles against good size. Germany has good sides. Yes. Right? Yeah. And and US doesn't. So they're, they're like, you know, um US is a perfect matchup for Canada is yeah. what everyone thinks. And I and, agree. and, and to, if you watch the US play, don't get me wrong, I haven't watched a ton of US games so far this this uh this tournament, but the at least the times that I've watched them, they play so helter skelter like it's it's not pretty, man. It's not pretty at times. But because of the talent they're still overwhelming against most teams, right? But because of this, like, I wasn't shocked that they lost to Lithuania. You know, mind you, Lithuania is bigger, but to me, it's not impossible to see this team lose. You know what I mean? Like, even, even versus Germany, they struggled. Like, I know it was, it was like the, the preseason or like, you know, they, they had some exhibition games, but even against Germany, they struggled. And I can see them struggling again. And with the way the team is constructed, like, some of these guys, they're not totally accepting of their roles like they're winning so they're not saying anything but like even mm. edwards was was scoffing at the, the, the possibility of coming off the bench now kerr let him start and now he's doing his thing he's the best player but like mm. that was the thing you're seeing what brandon m gringham right now he's really not accepting the role that he has he's not saying too much now because they're they're going along and winning but he's not satisfied with what's how he's been playing how he's been used you know what I mean? So there, there's guys there that it's like you can poke holes in this team. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, yep. like, like to, me, to, to me, like their best lineup is Edwards, Halliburton, Reeves, Bridges, and Jackson, right? That's a good lineup. And on paper, that's, that's a better lineup than what Canada has to offer. But are you afraid of that lineup? Well, in, wait, wait, in what way? No, but I'm saying, but I'm, I'm saying, are you, are you afraid of that lineup at all? I'm just saying on paper, saying. It, on paper it looks better, but 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 like we know, like are you are you Who's afraid of that lineup? Stopping Shea, exactly. Who's stopping Shea, you know Dylan's gonna, you know Dylan's guarding. Well, it's Edwards it's it's, one -on -one it's gonna have they're gonna have to throw bridges at him, and that that's probably their best he, bet. He ain't gonna, he can't stop Shea. Yeah, I, 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 don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't disagree with you. Yeah. I don't yeah. disagree with you, but I'm saying that that's probably their best bet. They're probably going to have to throw bridges at him and just, you know, like hopefully he can he can make him struggle. Yeah, good luck with that. Yeah, but but as far as like next year's concern, like, yeah, to your point, Randall, yes, they, they're going to – they have more of their work cut out for him only because of like, yeah, to your point, like Serbia is going to bring back Joker. France, even though they lost in the first round, because they're hosting the Olympics, they're automatically in – they're going to be getting Wemby, and then there's rumors that they also could get Embiid. You know what I mean? So imagine a lineup of like Embiid and Wemby on the floor, you know, whether they keep Gobert or not. But, he, I mean, they could throw a lineup like that on the floor at times. You know what I mean? So, like, if yeah, a, a, lineup, a lineup like what? A, a front line of like two seven footers at the minimum, right? If, if Embiid decides to play, is what I'm saying, because he, he could actually play for him. <laughs> How he's isn't he Cameroon from Cameroon? He's, he's got he's got three passports, man. He's got Cameroon, he's got a U.S. one, and he's got a France one. Yeah, he, got a he, he can yep. he can execute the France one. So yeah. so that's what I'm saying. Like it could be interesting. But has but he played for the U.S. before? Sorry, has he played for the U.S. No, before? he hasn't. He hasn't. No, he hasn't. He hasn't played for anybody actually. 
Mm-hmm. He hasn't. But, but but like to that point, like I think if you know you the Canada brings who they need to bring as well, I think Canada will medal for sure. Absolutely, they will medal for sure. Um, but like they're just gonna have the work cut off from because the, some of the best players in the world don't play in North America, man. You know, like Serbia, like I said, Serbia's made it this far. They don't even have the Joker. You know, and I don't know if you guys saw the World Championships or the, or the European Championships last summer where Joker was playing, oh. and like it was, it was, was crazy. it was, it was like taking candy from a baby. Yep. Mm-hmm. You know, so like that that monster is not playing. Like he's going to be playing next year for the Olympics. So that's that's where it's going to get interesting. But like with that said, I think Canada still has a great chance of bringing home their first medal since what 1984 in basketball. If I have that correct, yep. right? Since since the LA Olympics in '84, so this is this is a real opportunity. Last thing I'll say too, I don't know if you guys know about this, but or you guys may know about this, but um, and shout out to Curtis because I'm stealing your point right now if you're listening. So I don't I don't care. I told you I was jacking this anyway. But um, a team that's interesting to to watch, and I'm not saying on a medal front, but um, I know during the world uh, the world championships, it's interesting to see what the Bahamas is doing with their team. Because if you're if you're looking at their squad right now, right now they have um, Buddy Healed, um, Eric Gordon has now committed to the, to the Bahamas and was doing damage in some of the games in the World Championships and DeAndre Ayton. Plus they got the Mobley brothers, and now there's also and now there's also and now there's also talks that Clay might you know now that he's in the this stage of his career he might go play for the Bahamas to to, to make the Olympic team. Like, well, like if that if they, they have, if if they make the Olympics, again I'm stealing Curtis's point. So Curtis, yes, I'm stealing your point. But if they if they make the Olympics, they're that's gonna be that's gonna be a problematic team too, just based on the guys that they have. Um, are problematic, they, are they, problematic for who? Yeah, no, but but what? How do these guys? Are they have they have? Um, yes. Yeah. They have yeah they did, well, I, well yeah. I, yeah, I didn't really. Aiden's from, from the Bahamas. Yeah, Aiden's from the no, I know, Bahamas, I know right? and Buddy Hill. Right. I know those two. I, I I didn't know about Eric yeah, Gordon, but he but he was he was he like, naturalized. Yo, they they naturalized. beat Argentina by like twenty something points the other day. Like Argentina is not the same team as they were back in like the you know mid two thousands. Who who does who does Argentina have? Bro? But the yeah, but nobody, the point he, but the point I'm making though is that this is this is not a slouch team. You know what I'm saying? Like that's not a slouch no, team. I'm either. not worried. So hold on. I'm, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not worried about them. Don't get me wrong. I'm not. I'm not worried about them for Canada. I'm just saying overall, like that's the team that may that that may sneak out under radar just based on who they have, especially if like, uh, especially if like an Evan Mobley and stuff comes back. Nope. Nope. Especially like a, nope. Sorry, was that? Nope. <laughs> I, I I don't I don't know I don't know how much it would come to fruition. All those guys would come, a, and b is how, how do they get it's like. Is there is there a cap on neutral like how many players they can get like Yeah, I don't, I don't know how they're doing this. One. I, I don't know how they're doing this. One. But, but it's happening. one, right? One. Yeah, because and Pascal um, Siakam get neutralized for Canada. Because um what's his face? Uh that guy on Slovenia, Toby, they're talking about it like he's not Slovenian. They just basically naturalized him right, to play right. on the Slovenian team. And they go FIBA allows one naturalized player. Mm. So you have to meaning so what it means by naturalized in that sense is that no family member is Slovenian. Like you can only have one player where, like if you have a family member, whether it's a grandfather, grandmother, mother, father, then you're, you, can do you it. get your passport. Right. But if you don't have, if no family member, none at all, like, you know, it's like some black guy go playing for China, right? Like, right. you know, like no, no family member whatsoever, no nothing is, is Slovenian or Chinese or whatever. Yeah. Right, like China has one black. Oh, uh, was it not China? Uh, Montenegro had that black guy playing on it. Right now, maybe he played a professional in Montenegro or something, and then he became a citizen. I don't know. But you only get one naturalized player. Where that means no family member is from that country that you're playing for. So, um, but I'm not worried about Bahamas. I think on paper they like they look cool, but who's the point guard? Eric Gordon is old. He ain't guarding nobody. You can only play so many bigs between the Moby brothers, so you only have, you know, what, 80? That guy is wishy-washy. So I think on paper they look good, and it might be exciting, but I don't know if they're going to make a lot of noise. I'm just being honest, Calvin. Yeah, I, like I said earlier, I'm not, I'm not saying they're going to medal. I'm not saying they're going to threaten Team Canada and stuff. I'm just saying, like, on like if they make the Olympics, I think they may scare some teams. 
So. That's that's not going to be a team where they're they're just going to get knocked out the tournament, losing three games by twenty five points. You know what I mean, and getting out of there well, before the weekend. They, they they might not lose by twenty five points, but I don't think they're gonna, they might not, they're not going to get blown out. But I don't know if they're going to beat people. Like you see how different FIBA is, bro. Yeah, yeah, for sure. There's ball movement. There's you know like asking cutting, right? And so you know, like is is Eric Gordon going to be playing iso ball? Just want to be jacking up shots? Is he going to start pounding if he doesn't get the ball? But he needs to get a shot off, right? Mm-hmm. Like that's why a lot of these guys on the team USA they're struggling because these guys don't know how to play without the ball, right? right? A lot of these guys don't know how to play without the ball. So like, like an Ingram, for example. Yeah, exactly. So these guys, I think they'll be that. Maybe they won't get blown out, but I don't know if they're, you know, anybody's going to be scared of them. Like who are they going to be scared of on that team, right? Like you know, now if they load up with a lot of NBA guys at right positions, like the point guard position and the thing is a legit scorer, mm-hmm. but he was a catch and shoot guy to me. Um, you know, he's not gonna he's not a shit, he's not gonna he's not a shit, he's not a Luca, he's not gonna somebody that's gonna, you know, shift you and like or you know, shift you like shorter, right? Like you look at these guys that are making noise. Buddy Hill's a straight catch and shoot guy. Um, you know, maybe with him and Clay you can run some stuff having them coming off screens kinda like what he does with, with, with Steph. A lot of misdirection, a lot of, you know, switching out and then diving or whatever split action, but I don't know. I don't see it, Calvin. But mm-hmm. whatever. Maybe they'll maybe they win the Caricom. Maybe they you know they'll make it out of like the islands, beat Jamaica and all the other Caribbean oh, islands. Okay, yeah, because they're, yeah, they're they're gonna have to qualify for the Olympics. Yeah, I don't know if anybody's gonna people's gonna you know anybody in the other countries gonna surely fear any legit country anyway. Maybe they'll beat South Sudan or fucking <laughs> Lebanon or wherever, but <laughs> they're not you know any. <laughs> Any of the top twenty teams, I think, will will fear them. <laughs> he says South Sudan. Uh, that's hilarious. But no, nah, but like I said, but but to wrap up to wrap up though, man, like again, I think the three of us could easily say like this is the best potential we've seen, you know, from Team Canada, I think ever. And it's I think it's only the beginning because of the the, the and you guys know better than than most people. The, the the pipeline that's coming through this nation right now, even even in this city, much less this city, the pipeline that's coming through this yeah. nation right now, this this is only the beginning. Only the beginning. This is only the beginning, you know, and uh, that yeah. uh, that to me is like within the next two to three Olympics, you you like to say that Canada's going to win gold, you're like you're not going to laugh at that anymore. And I think that's yeah. the biggest thing out of all of this, which I think is crazy. This is just the beginning. Yeah. All right, but fellas, thank you for 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 hopping on this this semi emergency podcast, man. On on Team Canada, like, yeah, I'm I'm surprised. Like I said, I'm 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 ha- not surprised, but I'm I'm happy to see what is happening here. Like this is, I think this is a Me great too. story. And is, and I, and I'll tell you what, if Canada wins gold, we we got to do this again on Sunday. Sure. Yeah. If they, if, sure. they, if they if they if they win gold, like as soon as the medals are hung o- around their necks, uh, you guys are getting the call for me to do this. I was, honestly, for me, I thought you, I thought you were gonna say if Canada wins gold, you're gonna run down Young Street naked. Like, uh, nah, 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 no, nobody see, needs to see <laughs> those visuals. <laughs> <bro>. Nah, <laughs> I really thought that's what you're gonna say. Kevin, nah, 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 nah. The clothes are staying on, bro. But thank you guys for hopping on, though, for real. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> No problem, man. <laughs> Thank you for checking out the latest edition of the Av Podcast. Uh, special shout out goes out to Randall Walter and O'Neill Kamaka for hopping on uh, this Team Basketball Team Canada episode. Um, you know, we're, we're spreading lots of love for Team Canada's basketball program today. Whether they win or lose against Serbia, or they win it all and get the gold, you know, on Sunday. At the end of the day, no matter where they they finish at this point, I think the progress of what they've done the last um, the last couple of weeks has been so impressive that you know I think we all we're all here standing proudly for them. So um, you know we can't wait to the Olympics, which is going to be the uh, the major goal. But for now, we're going to take this and ride with it all the way to the end. So you know, like I said, uh, we recorded this on Wednesday night. So. Um, we recorded this before the results of the Canada Serbia game. So whichever happens after that, we'll know when you'll know. But at, at the same time, you know, this episode couldn't be held back because of that. So, um, like I said, I wasn't even planning on recording this podcast, 
um, this week, actually, um, in terms of putting one out anyway. But I'm glad we did because, like I said, this is a huge moment, man. His history is being made right in front of our face. You know, you always got to celebrate that. Um, with that said, uh, next week, we'll have a new episode of the Av podcast um, the week after on the 23rd of September. Sorry, the 22nd of September. Uh, we'll have a new episode of my story featuring Jalen Celestine. That one was an interesting one that we did, uh, I think, this week. So that will be put out on the 22nd of September. So look out for that as well. Um, and remember, as always, South Shariah is available wherever you listen to podcasts, Apple, Spotify, Google Podcasts as well. Not Stitcher because Stitcher is defunct. But you can also check it on TuneIn and Alexa. So you can watch it or listen to it on your TV. And once again, check out the website. Check out the catalog at SouthSharav.com. Make sure you hit the like and subscribe buttons on wherever you listen, including my five stars. Give me all of them. I want them all like the Mario Brothers. I want them all collecting them all like coins. Let's go. <laughs> all right. So make sure you, you hit up the five stars and leave the comments as well. All right. For Rounda Walter and O'Neill Kamaka, this is Cal C. And you just tuned into the latest episode of the App Podcast right here on South Shirav Radio. All right, until the next one. Peace. Have a great weekend. Old Canada.